Hello everyone, I'm Junya Nose at Tokyo Institute of Technology. I'd like to give you a brief overview of a programming environment based on the design recipe, which I am developing as my master's thesis project. The program design recipe is a sequence of steps for designing functions. Suppose we are asked to define a function that computes the sum of an integer list. The design recipe says the first thing to do is to define the integer list data type and create data examples for the two patterns, empty and cons. Next, we write the purpose, the name, and the type of the function and create test using the data examples from step 1. Then, we develop a template which is a program with necessary conditionals and recursive calls and completes the function definition by filling in the holes of the template. Lastly, we run the test from step 3. By following the design recipe, the programmer can avoid common mistakes such as no exhaustive data examples and templates that cause infinity loops. However, the programmer cannot check whether the outcome of each intermediate step is correct or not. Our goal is to enable this kind of correctness checking. We propose an interactive programming environment centered around the design recipe. The environment consists of a browser-based user interface, which guides the user to go through each step of the design recipe, and a feedback generator, which manipulates user input and provides suggestions and warning to the user. To generate feedback systematically, we translate user input into a domain-specific language where data examples and templates are represented as racket data structures. Let me explain what kind of feedback we intend to generate. First, we would like to tell the programmer whether the set of data examples includes an interesting example, not just driver ones. In the case of the sum function, if there are only empty and singleton lists, we suggest that the programmer should create a larger example. And if there is an example with nesting consists, we conclude that the examples are exhaustive. Secondary, we would like to evaluate templates based on the fragments of the code provided by the user. For example, if there is a recursive call of some on the original argument LST, we warn the programmer that the function may not terminate. And if the recursive call is made on a smaller argument, we say that the template is correct. Thirdly, we plan to incorporate Felsman's feedback, which answers the question. Am I on the right track? The idea is to decide whether the user's incomplete program leads to a correct solution by trying to fill in the holes using a program synthesizer. If the synthesizer could produce a complete program satisfying all the tests provided by the user, it means the user is on the right track. So, here is a summary of our programming environment. We have developed an initial version of the user interface, and we are currently working on the DSL. If you have any suggestions on the design and implementation, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you for that talk. Uh, we have some time for questions. I have a question. Uh, thank you. It's very, very uh, interesting work and something close to my heart. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand how uh, I, I didn't 
quite catch that last part about the all am I on the right track how you're integrating or doing the synthesis parts or are you using a synthesizer or right now uh, oh, how does no. that work is, um, is it something you want to do I, I guess I'm a little confused about the the relationship between that and the uh, am I on, are you on am I on the right track work yeah so let me just ask uh, Junya did you understand the question <laughs> He's smiling. Okay, I, I will answer your question. So the synthesis, synthesis part is just a uh, future work. So we are not currently using any synthesizer. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank uh, you. I'd be, I'd be interested in talking with you more about that part. Yeah. Uh, Sam has a question. Do you want to, Sam, do you want to ask your question? Sure. You said you check if you're making the correct recursive call in the mm -hmm. template. How do you mm -hmm. know whether they're making the right recursive call, whether REST produces a smaller in, uh, version of the input, that sort of thing? Yeah, so if we are just writing a structurally recursive function, then um, the recursive calls the position of recursive calls must match the position of recursive arguments to the data type, right? Uh, right, but I guess I'm wondering, where do you get the knowledge that REST is the uh, accessor for the particular, how do you interpret data definitions so that you can know what the appropriate selectors are. Mm -hmm. So um, our user interface has some uh, like checkbox. So you can check this um, argument to the constructor is a recursive one. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then if you collect those information, you can you can see where we should insert recursive calls. Okay. Okay, we have a question from Chung Che. Yes. Uh, so, kind of following up on the previous question, uh, can you give a bit, a bit more detail about your language of data definitions? Kind of uh, maybe on the abstract level or a concrete level, like like what data definitions do you accept? Um, sometimes we write, you know data definitions that look like, you know, uh, a bucket is either a number greater than two or mm -hmm. a number less than two. And I don't know how much you, you will want to uh, try to parse these and then figure out what the, the uh, accessors uh, are. Yeah, so initially our user interface has um, the name of the data type and the first pattern of that data type and you can what's a pattern pattern uh like new or cons in the case of this so can I, I, I'm, uh, can the programmer de define their own data like with yes, their own yes. structures yes and then they, okay yeah and then you can specify which arguments are recursive and what else. And when you define this data type, um, you have to provide one data example for every pattern so that you can have a exhaustive set of data examples. Okay, uh, Matthew Flat. Uh, we've got time for just a short little question. Okay, it keeps following on the previous two questions. <coughs> Excuse me. One thing I force my students to do is to pull apart everything that they're dispatching on. So they should take the first and the rest of a cons, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and like I would say, the template is not complete yet if they leave that out. Is that something you would do or, or consider adding to your tool? Yeah, I think so. This. Um explicitly inserting every selector is the way 
uh, we 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 programming how to design programs. So I we we plan to follow that discipline. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yes.